It's book club, and we read a book called Piranesi. It is a fantasy book. It is short. It's only about 240 pages, and it was good. It was not my favorite book, and it was hard to get into in the beginning, but it was a really good book. So if you're interested in a fantasy, you know, checking out a fantasy book, that might be a good one because it's not super long. There's a lot of development of the world in the beginning. So you just have to be patient. So Kathy and Kirsten and I break it down and discuss. And I think we had a really good discussion about it. It's a kind of a deep book, kind of a parallel meaning book. Um, and I'm glad we read it. I don't know that I ever need to read it again, but I'm glad I'm glad I read it for this time. We also talked about briefly touched on having a kid graduate from high school and what that feels like. We talked about traveling and going to Weedowie with the Girl Scouts and, um, and yeah, just, we just shot the shit a little bit, which is kind of nice. So thank you for coming back every week. Thank you for checking out my podcast sponsors. They, um, I'm so excited to have them and you know, the way I keep them is if, if anybody who listens, checks out what um, what their products are and maybe uses something they might like. If you haven't bought your free water slides, you can go to freewaters.com and buy some new fancy slides. They're super cute and really fun. And uh, let me know if you read Piranesi and what you think about it. Our next book club book is by Fanny Flagg. We wanted to read, uh, have a summer read. It's called The All-Girl Filling Station's Last Reunion by Fanny Flagg. We wanted to read a Southern author, which you'll hear in this episode. Uh, that was Kirsten's idea. And we just kind of, after much back and forth, uh, landed on this book, The All-Girl Filling Station's Last Reunion by Fanny Flagg. She is an excellent writer. She's written so many great books. Probably her best-known book is Fried Green Tomatoes at the Whistle Stop Cafe. So read with us if you like. It'll be a nice light summer read. Um, anyway, I hope you enjoy this podcast episode about Piranesi with me and Kathy and Kirsten. My Who's dad big? is in the house just sitting oh, there. Oh, yeah, your dad got here. I me. forgot yeah. he was here. Oh. oh, hooray. How was his journey? It was good. Good. <laughs> it's okay <laughs> if I just start the podcast out crying. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's... <laughs> Can I just start necessary? crying? I'm yes. here for that energy. I feel you. You're here pain. for that energy. <laughs> I'm with you. I will start crying too. Yeah. Okay. 100%. So we, uh, let's all just start crying together. <laughs> yeah. And then we can feel like we are not alone in our crying. Yeah. I am over freaking whelmed. Yeah. And I was doing good until today. And I think the reason I got overwhelmed today is because um, it um, the push is here, and I'm not as prepared for it as I expected, and I don't like that. And I'm super overwhelmed. Um, you know, I also think there's something crazy about graduation. Like, I didn't think I was going to be nearly as emotional as I was. Yeah. And the day of graduation, I was great. I think I was uh, hold, exhausted. Hold on one second. Hey, guys, we're recording. Oh, sorry. Okay, sorry. <laughs> you, you were uh, far more emotional than you expected? Yeah. Like, the day before, the day after, I would, like anything. I was tearing, crying at the drop of a hat, like things that were completely unrelated. Like there's definitely an emotional piece that I didn't really anticipate. Like I knew I was going to cry. I was like, Oh, I'll cry at graduation. But I, I don't know. There was more to it. So I wonder since you're about to have that. Uh, would in you be interested heartbeat. in podcasting about this Monday or Tuesday? <laughs> <laughs> because I will be then have grad going through graduation yes. and yes. we'll probably have a, a lot to say. Would you be interested in doing that? Yeah, sure. Okay. Well, yeah. Let's look at our calendar. That would make me so happy. Um, <laughs> but um, anyway, I saw this dress on Instagram and I thought it's great. it is amazing. Yeah. I can't believe you made that. Oh, thank you. It's unhemmed. It's, I literally does it need to be hemmed? I love it. I mean, I don't know. You can't tell. Actually. Uh -uh. <laughs> yeah. No, it's like the perfect flowy material. Like you don't yeah. need to, I don't think. It's amazing. Thank you. It's it's just a perfect, comfortable, yeah. like, throw it on. I can run errands, but also go out to dinner. <laughs> dress. It is true. If I were going out to dinner, but right. I haven't <laughs> had that opportunity for time. <laughs> In a long time. Why are you about to cry? Uh, just, you know, for me, I don't have a graduate other than an eighth grade graduate. Yes. <laughs> totally different thing. Um, I, I Richard is out of town. Um, 
working for a couple of weeks and um, the end of the school year wrap up plus my end of school year because I'm in class Mm -hmm. and I have to turn in 34 pages before we go to Weedowie um, because, yeah, because I don't want to be at the internet cafe while we're <laughs> while we're at the lake house so um i'm trying to do a ton of work like trying to keep up with the current work and do a whole bunch of work that's um ahead of time and then also um camille leaves for costa rica 2 days after we get back from our girl scout trip so all of the planning for international travel for her and the packing and the very specific things that she's going to need for the rainforest, right. et cetera, um, need to be like locked right now. Mm-hmm. Um, and, um, like before we go, mm-hmm. because obviously when I get back, um, not a lot of time. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's just, you know, just a lot. It's a lot. a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I know last night Isla goes, I need you to take me to school tomorrow. And I thought, Oh my God, I have, therapy at eight which I can do in the car but I don't like to do in the car right. and uh I have this at nine I was like okay if we can leave at seven thirty, which is about 15 minutes earlier than usual I can get back in time to like have a minute we did I got back just in time to walk in here and did my therapy on the phone and was just rushed and rushed and anxious didn't get to do my makeup didn't get to have like a minute um and it kind of made it's. It, I feel like it has um, forced me to set the tone for the next like three days. Started this morning, and I should have. I, I don't know what else I could have done. I could have said, "No, you have to ride to school with your sister." Uh, her sister drives three girls in a carpool, and I think it's pretty rowdy. And it's finals tomorrow, mm-hmm. and Isla is so nervous about her finals that she said, if I ride in carpool, I'm going to be so distracted. And then if they, if anybody's late, because one of the carpool girls is notoriously late Mm -hmm. and they've had detention over and over again because they're just waiting for this one girl. Um, she's like, I'm going to be a nervous wreck. And I was like, well, I can't, I can't go. Sucks for you. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. That's not like a diva move of like, right. Uh, No, no, no. Not for her. Totally legit. Tests are so hard for her that, so I was like, okay, well, I can do this. I can do it all. And then I was driving home going, I can't do anything. I am a mess. I can't figure anything out. I've got no time. I don't have enough time to do everything that I can't take care of everybody. People are shitting on me in my household. I don't know, understand what's happening. I have two trips back to back. And then part of me went, wait a minute. I'm taking the older Girl Scouts to Catalina and I don't have to do anything. So... As much as it would be more helpful for me to be home, I was like, I'm going to bring some books. I'm going to get some stuff done because I have like two friends, two close people in our lives have just had babies. I cannot find the time to send them flowers. I cannot find the minute in the day to just go online and order flowers. And it's driving me crazy, even though that sounds really stupid. But that's the way I behave when something like that happens is that's important to me is something for me to send them flowers. Right. Can't find the minute. So I was like, Kalina, well, that mental weight. Like if you could just do it, then yeah. you'd be better. Yeah, you're right? right. But the fact that you can't do it day after day, like it just drags you down because it does. it's constantly on your brain. And it's yeah. so simple. And I yeah. go and and it's a misrepresentation of myself mm-hmm. to not be able to do it. Right. To myself, like the person receiving flowers would have no idea that I, that's important to me. Mm-hmm. You know, they would never think twice, but it is important to me. It's like one of those self-care things I can't yeah. get to. Uh, <laughs> it's making me crazy. And then I, the list goes on. But anyway, anyway, I can't wait to talk mm-hmm. to you about graduation now because I am anticipating. <laughs> uh, I don't really know what to expect, but I'm anticipating it's going to be pretty emotional. Mm-hmm. I was less emotional when your son graduated than I expected. I thought mm-hmm. I was going to be a mess. And I think um, my my neighbor and my the people behind us were so distracting mm-hmm. that I didn't I didn't get it as emotional as I expected. Yeah. You know? I did not get as emotional. I mean, we can talk about this but but, yeah. during for a number of reasons, but the lead up and the aftermath were 
really tough. <laughs> okay, we'll talk about it. <laughs> Should we talk about our book, Piranesi? <laughs> sure, sure. What'd you think? That's why we're here, right? That's why we're here. (laughs) I can't wait to hear what you guys say about this book. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's definitely one to talk about. Uh Uh-huh. I think we have to say off the bat that anything that we say about it is going to be a spoiler. This book is a spoiler, right? You can't talk about it without giving it away. I knew it was happening from the beginning. I figured it out. Yeah, I was like, oh, he's in an alternate universe. Someone send him in this alternate universe. What I, so... What I was going to say is, as I was reading this book, I was like, where the hell is this story going? Like, I couldn't, I was like, I just kept waiting. Like, where? I was so curious. Uh And then all of a sudden, like, I I don't know what happened. Like, my book got moved from, like, the desk to the nightstand, like, somewhere, right? All of a sudden, I pick, I was like, oh, my God, I forgot to finish reading it. (laughs) So while I was super curious reading the book, I, like, could have cared less about what actually happened. And then like the whole, like I was, I, the entire time I kept thinking, where is this book going? And then when we got to the end, I was like, are you kidding me? Is that it? Like he just walks out. What are you talking? I don't know. I was very disappointed by the end. Yeah. I don't think that it was like, but I think in the end, it's not necessarily a plot heavy book. Like it is and it isn't. It's It's like, yeah, it's really more of a thinking book and like a talking. I think that it's one that I'm going to think about a lot for a while after. Um, Why do you think that? Because I don't know. I just think that there are so many different interesting parallels, like about mental illness. It's like, so he went, he lost his mind Mm -hmm. in the other worlds, Mm -hmm. essentially. But also did he, (laughs) you know, and it's almost like it just made, makes me rethink sometimes, you know, you see a homeless person who is clearly mentally ill and who's living in a different world. And you think like, it's just like a matrix moment of like, mm-hmm. oh, did they just swallow a different pill than me? Mm-hmm. Like, maybe their reality is completely legitimate. Mm-hmm. Um, he was just living according to his own reality. And that reality there was a lot to advertise for it. Like it clearly was pleasant enough or not. It was engaging or um, enough that all these people, the people who had been there wanted to return, Mm -hmm. even though he was imprisoned there, he did want to return. He didn't necessarily want to live there. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I think the other thing that I just will be thinking about for a long time is the different selves that we shed mm-hmm. along the way because he was Matthew Rose Sorensen mm-hmm. and Matthew Rose Sorensen mm-hmm. was kidnapped and put in this alternate reality and lost himself and was called by the other Piranesi. Mm-hmm. And that was his name. And then when he reemerged, when he was rescued and reemerged into the world or our world, he felt like he wasn't either of those people anymore. And so people were calling him Matthew Rose Sorensen, but he felt like he was now the next, the next version of himself. And he didn't really relate to Piranesi or Mm -hmm. Matthew Rose Sorensen. And I thought that was really interesting. And um, I can definitely feel that to a lesser extent in my life of going, Oh, interesting. Like we did um, an exercise in, writing class the other day talking about what book would you write if you were writing what what would your memoir be if you were writing ages zero to 20 Mm. what would your memoir be if you were writing these years and I thought oh my god wow (laughs) it's just a totally different story it's very true Mm -hmm. um that's an interesting perspective as I was reading it um first of all I was super annoyed with the 23rd day of the fourth Sunday in the hall of the albatross yeah. that died four years ago. Yeah, that was and tough was to like, get through. Yeah. Oh my God, how many times can you, I don't need to repeat that. I know because it was written in journal form mm-hmm. and he wrote that, you know, this is the date uh, and the year wasn't like 1902. It was the year that the albatross came to the North Hall or whatever. And I was like, I got it. Like, I got it. I don't need to read I just skimmed over, over those. Over. Oh. Well, I listened to it on audiobook because uh, I had no time. So I had to listen to, mm-hmm. and the Disney, and the Albatross came to the North Hall. And I was like, oh, 
I got bogged down a little bit in that minutia mm. when I was listening to it. Um, but then I thought, I thought very early when the other showed up, I thought the other has him there in prison. I knew it right away. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know how or why, mm -hmm. but I knew that's what it was about. And then when the, um, what's her name, started showing up and he said, don't talk to her. She's evil. I was like, oh, he's a really bad guy. This guy is really mm -hmm. bad. Mm -hmm. And she's the way out. So I was frustrated that he was in that, not able to figure that out. Um, but I like what you said about the mental illness piece because that is a very clear way of describing maybe how somebody is in this world, how they mm -hmm. walk through their life, homeless perhaps, or schizophrenic. You know, my uncle was schizophrenic and his reality was inarguably very different than mine. And um, how can you say it's invalid? You know, yeah. it, it may not, it's not based in reality for real, but it's his reality. How do you deal with that? You know, he always thought uh, someone was trying to kill him all the time. And you're like, no one's here. <laughs> no, you live in a trailer in the middle of a pasture in Alabama. No one's looking for you. So, but how do you have compassion for that? You have to have compassion for that. That that's what he really believed was happening every day. Um, and how terrible that would be and how scary and how scary it would be to step out of that, like you said, when he came back yeah. and went, I'm um, neither of these people. I'm not sure what to do. Yeah, because he spent like these whatever he was in prison for like six years mm -hmm. or whatever. And he spent those years wondering. So living with the bones of the skeletons of 13 people. So mm -hmm. he and he and, and the other he would come in contact with the other this one man himself. So he believed that he was the 15th person on earth. And yeah. when, then when this interloper who turns out to be a cop, Raphael shows up, he, he just identifies this person as 16, mm -hmm. like the 16th person. And then he's talking to her and she's telling him about this other world, like our world, the world. <laughs> and, um, he's saying, well, are there more people there? And she's like, yeah, there are. And he's like, I are there 70 people there? Right. And it blows his mind that she's like, yes, there are, there are more than 70 people yeah. in the world. And it blows his mind. I think that was interesting too, like on a, just thinking about the pandemic and like when we were really living in isolation, like it, it's sort of allegorical or, um, to that, um, just, he was fine living alone and just having occasional com contact with the other until he came in contact with 16 mm -hmm. and then realized about the other world, then the knowledge of that other world made him feel imprisoned. He mm -hmm. was fine before that. Um, but was he fine? I, yeah, I was going to well, say, I don't know that he was fine because he was annoyed that he only got to see the other twice a week. Yes. You know, he definitely wanted more contact. Yeah. But he, but had, he didn't have he the knowledge that okay. there was. Right. Yeah. He I mean, he certainly okay. got through and yeah. found stuff to do and had his whole routine. But yeah. well, it speaks to know. what the brain does to cope. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That the brain will create a personality disorder. Yeah. To be able to cope with a trauma. And yeah. that's basically what he did. Not maybe not a personality disorder per se, but another persona. Yeah. No, mm -hmm. definitely. I mean, it's that's you're right. That's exactly the theme of the book is trauma mm -hmm. and trauma and resilience, because mm -hmm. honestly, he was incredibly resilient and the bones of the 13 others indicate that they you know, were not, they were not yeah. like, you know, the one, um, who was it? Ritter who was found eventually, but starving and emaciated and malnourished, um, was not able to figure out how to fish and dry seaweed and, mm -hmm. and all of these things. Um, yeah. Where do you think this other reality was? Was it on a different plane, a different planet? That's the one thing I was like. No idea. How did they get there? Through the closet? Um, yeah, it was, that was one of the things that isn't granular. Like it was very, it were definitely like yeah. nods to Narnia or whatever, but that it's like the Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe. You There's a wardrobe, like you literally <laughs> open the door and yeah. you go through the wardrobe. Right. And this was very unclear other than the seaside. And um 
that it was that it was somehow seaside yeah. and it sounded like it was more a matter of just shifting the mind of like getting to a place yeah. where they could shift mm-hmm. their minds and then be there mm-hmm. um i thought it was very interesting the way um one of the philosophers or the um anthropologists the guru guys who were talking about this other world um talked it called it a do they call it a dis dispensary not a dispensary world uh, what was the word that they used mm. that that was basically they believed that this world to be one where the the ideas like the old ideas flowed into and when people discarded the old ways they those old ways flowed into this world oh i don't remember that yeah i don't either um i don't remember that <laughs> If I had taken notes, it would be more helpful. Uh, well, if I'd actually read the book. Apparently if I had read it. closer, it'd be more helpful. Yeah, I don't remember that. I don't remember that, but that's really mm-hmm. interesting. And that he really adapted. So Piranesi, um, Matthew Rose Sorensen, like by adopting Piranesi, he really adopted that mindset of like, oh, the house will tell me. Because the other mm-hmm. this other world is called the house. I belong to the um, house. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the house would guide him. And it did like he, he learned he, it basically, he relied on intuition to, and, and really paying attention to the seasons because he knew when the floods would come and maybe the others, all, all the bones, maybe they did not. Um, right. The part that was really unclear though, is how long did it take for that to happen for him to shed his, like, I mean, granted he was there for six years, but like, it seems like almost instantaneously he forgot that he was Matthew Rose Sorensen. You we know what I mean? Like we don't know. And yeah, we no, don't really it's very know. unclear. I feel yeah. like there was a lot left unsaid that was questionable. Well, uh, what I got confused a little bit with the journals, right? When yeah. he found journals from like ahead of him or something or some, there was some timeline issue with the journals where I was a little confused. I, yes. Oh, I think the journals. Okay. So this is my understanding of the journals. Um, at one point he realizes that the journals, there's some reference to, cause he indexes all of his journals. He yeah. has this crazy index, which is really smart, but, yes. <laughs> but also crazy. Yes. Um, he finds in the index, some reference to journal number 21 or something. And he's yeah. like, what, how can that be when I'm only at 11? Yes. That's, that's right. Or whatever. But I, I think he, when, I think that is when the shift happened, when he went from Matthew Rose, Rose Sorensen to Piranesi, when he absolutely like made that shift, he crossed out the, the two on the 21 journal, because when he goes back into our world, he finds his archived his his um, journals from like one to ten or mm-hmm. something like that. So he continues with these journals in mm-hmm. the house mm-hmm. when he's in the house world, and he just and so to him these are journals. So he continues them like from as Matthew Rose Sorensen in the house. Mm-hmm. So he's on like eleven or you know. Yeah, see, too, but remember when he finally realizes like how he got into the house originally, um, what's his name? Ketterly was like, here, take this bag with you because the bag had his journal. So he brought them into the other world. Like that was the part that was confusing. Oh, yeah. Yes. Because he, he made him bring some of those journals. But then what, how, like, how did he forget all of that knowledge? Like, when did that shift happen? When did he start these new journals? And then- And where did he hide those original ones that he forgot about that he knew the whole layout of this house? I don't think he, I think he, uh, he shredded them to smithereens. Didn't he um, shred that? Because remember when he goes something, right? Yeah. I think that he shredded the old journals once when his mind was shifting. I think he referenced something in the old journals and it was too hard for him to Mm -hmm. read about his life as Matthew Rose Sorensen. And so he shredded up those pieces. Cause those were the pages that the, um, the birds were using to mm-hmm. line their nests. Um, and the, that's right. Cause he gathered them up and put them back together to try and figure yeah, out what, right. if what 16 was saying was true, but yeah. Isn't that also another interesting layer that you, um, 
you know, people who have conditions like bipolar and get medicated when they start feeling better, they don't want the medication anymore. That's kind of like that where mm. he didn't want that information anymore because he'd created this alter reality, this altered ego, mm -hmm. so to speak, where they couldn't coexist or he wouldn't, yes. he wouldn't be able to survive. Yeah. Right. Right. Because it would be tr too traumatic. Too traumatic. Yeah. yeah, it would be. Really, I'd, I'd, I think I thought of the mental health parallels, but not really in the way that we're discussing them. Um, that is pretty cool. That makes the the book better to me. <laughs> I liked the book. I didn't have any problems with the book. I had a hard time getting it started. A very hard time. And yeah. that is, I, I just on my way here, I wish I had done this earlier, but you know, um, busy, we're busy. Yes, we are. <laughs> um, I started listening to a podcast that was discussing the Nerdette podcast, which I'd oh. never heard before, but I just, I Googled this book and thought who's talking about it. Okay. Some women talking about it. Let's, let's listen to what they have to say. And, um, I listened to like 10 minutes on my way here, yeah. but, um, yeah, that was one of the things. What, that it was hard to get started? That it was, yeah, that that's a universally held truth. <laughs> Almost everybody who reads this book is like, huh, what? okay, it's sort of a slog yeah. to get into. Um, it was, I was very yeah. bored for a long time, yeah, for longer yeah. than I would have given it if I hadn't been in a book. Club. Yeah. And it's very, because the house, the other world is like ancient times. Mm -hmm. It's these halls filled with marble statues and, and he speaks in a very ancient, like mm -hmm. ancient way. It's, it's very hard to connect to. Mm -hmm. And then when the other shows up and has a device and mm -hmm. is wearing like regular clothes, that was, I mean, I didn't like the other as a character. He I could, he was a bad yeah. man from mm -hmm. the beginning, yeah. but it was like, it was a way in for me as a reader that I was mm. like, Oh, okay. There's some, there's going to be some grounding here mm -hmm. in my reality because otherwise it's just like these ancient times and talking in this flowery sort of absurd way. His name's Pyrenees. I it just couldn't, I couldn't connect to it. Um, See, I feel like a lot of fantasy books are like that because they are creating this alternative world. There's so much set up Mm -hmm. that it takes a long time. That's why there are a thousand pages because yes. you have to like describe literally everything in this alternative world. Mm -hmm. And you're like, yeah, which is why this one yeah. is really quite brilliant as a fantasy book. Cause you know, my feelings about short books, whatever <laughs> yeah. it's 245 pages. And so the fact that she was able to create this mm -hmm. alternate reality in 245 pages and is, I think is really something. Yeah, I, uh, yes. she could have shortened the this is the world by half. <laughs> like I kept going, I understand it's dark. There's a lot of water. You're on the ocean. There's a tons of marble statues. There's a lot of halls. There's a lot of nooks and crannies. You're alone. I got it. And he I just think the hard part was like, you take 19 steps this way and take a left and then you do that. I was like, all right, I don't care. Like, I'm never going to remember this. <laughs> yeah. I can't remember how to like drive to like the supermarket some days. Yeah, do you know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah. this is not, I, like, I don't care. I get the rooms, like that is valuable, but how to get there. Yes. I feel like all of that could have been cut out. I, just, totally. I, don't. I don't know. I feel, I, I, gr I agree. <laughs> and yet I don't like, so devil's advocate, I, I feel like I felt the same way. I was like, oh my God. Not again. <laughs> like <laughs> latitude, longitude, Let's latitude, move along, longitude. Move along. And yet you really, it, it helped reinforce the sense of monotony and tedium in his life, like being alone and going through this. And literally this is what he has to think about. And then he has to go to these great lengths just to eat and live and like, and he's he, writing it all down. And he's writing it all <laughs> oh. down. He's indexing yeah. it. Yes. <laughs> you're like, Jesus. <laughs> yeah. But <sighs> it, I think that gave more of a sense of why his mind broke though, mm -hmm. because if, if she hadn't gone on and on and on with this world, you'd be like, okay, but like, get yourself together, book up, man. You know, yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> but it, it just, it was very tedious. And I think that that was like, for me, purpose. that was a way into the mental illness, like right. breakdown that mm -hmm. it's like, well, oh my God. Yeah. Like I'm going crazy reading this. Yeah. 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 Maybe so. Maybe so. Know. Pretty effective. <laughs> yeah. Cause I was like, oh, are you kidding me? Yeah. I mean, with the freaking albatross in the ninth hall, whatever. Oh, yeah. I was like, oh, yeah. yeah. And then the, I forgot about the steps. Yeah. 14 steps left, right. two to the right, hop over four yeah. stones. You're like, oh my God. <laughs> I completely forgot yeah. about that part.
This episode of Wife of the Party is brought to you by Warby Parker, the coolest eyeglasses experience ever. I hate buying eyeglasses because I feel rushed in the store. I There's so many different frames when you go to a, a, a glasses store, I get totally overwhelmed. The cool thing about Warby Parker is you can go online and take a quiz. What color do you like? What shape is your face? Um, what shape glasses are you interested in? And then they will present you with different options. Choose five different options and they send you a free at-home try-on kit. It's pretty awesome. So then you can try them on at home. You can wait till your husband comes on and try them on for him. You can try them on for your mom when she comes over the next day. They're awesome. So you can really kind of wear the glasses for a minute and see if they're comfortable. See if you like them. Um, can't decide between two pairs. They're so uh, very reasonably priced. You could get both of them. So Warby Parker offers everything you need for happier eyes. Eyeglasses, sunglasses, contact lenses, and eye exams. And you can shop with them online or in stores. Glasses start at $95. I mean, that's crazy. And that's with prescription lenses. They start at $95. I mean, the last time I bought glasses at a store, they were $500. This is just a no-brainer. Try Warby Parker's free home try-on program. You order five pairs of glasses to try at home for free. There's no obligation to buy. It ships free and includes a prepaid return shipping label. Try five pairs of glasses at home for free at warbyparker.com slash wife. That's Warby, W-A-R-B-Y, Parker, P-A-R-K-E-R dot com slash wife. I thought it was so much fun. I enjoyed it so much and I ordered two pairs of glasses. So I hope you have as much fun as I did checking out Warby Parker, warbyparker.com slash wife. Okay. This podcast is also sponsored by Coterie. Okay. I have a niece. She's about 18 months old. She's adorable. I love her to pieces. Obviously no one in my house has diapers. So Coterie sent me a package of diapers and I gave them to my sister-in-law. She told me they are the best diapers she has ever used in her entire life. She said they feel like cashmere. She said they are, absorb so much liquid. She loves this diaper and she's now ordering them for her, for her on her own for, from what I gave her. She absolutely loves this diaper company. If your baby has sensitive skin, Coterie is the diaper for you. It's it's great for sensitive skin. It's the highest performing diaper on the market for infants and toddlers with up to two times more liquid capacity and four times faster moisture wicking versus other brands. And moisture wicking is where they pull the moisture away from the skin. And moisture is what causes rashes. So it's much better for your baby. Your baby stays drier longer. Uh, Coterie diapers are made with clothing grade material giving your baby a cashmere-like feel so they're more comfortable for longer. And you know what? My sister-in-law told me they feel like cashmere, and she did not know this read, <laughs> said that they feel like cashmere, so they must really feel like cashmere. They're dermatologist tested, use only the cleanest ingredients, plus Coterie wipes are National Eczema Association approved. Coterie's been awarded Best Diaper and Wipes by both The Bump and Parents.com. Forget about night, nighttime leaks and wet cheeks and try the Rolls Royce of diapers, Coterie. I'm telling you, Cotty can't say enough good things about this diaper. She loved it. Right now, Coterie is partnering with my podcast to offer you 20% off your first order plus free shipping at Coterie.com slash wife. That's Coterie spelled C-O-T. E R I E C O T E R I E dot com slash wife for twenty percent off and free shipping. Coterie dot com slash wife. You know what's funny is once I got into the book, I really got into it. I didn't want to stop reading it. Yeah. Um, but it took a while. It took until sixteen showed up. When sixteen showed up, I went, okay, now we're interested. Now I was interested. I really was not interested and didn't really, it's not that I didn't care about the guy because I, I did care about him, but I didn't really care because I felt there was no end to the story. Are we just going to spend 245 pages talking about how many footsteps 
and the Albatross Hall for 200. I mean, something <laughs> needs to happen, but it didn't happen for a long yeah. time. Yeah, I feel you. I think that that was all the world building. It was yeah. like yeah. world building, world building, world building. We're in the world. And then 16 created conflict. That was really the first conflict other than his just his general survival, which, you know, I guess is conflict that like the flood's going to come and and the other not and, being super helpful. And, yeah. Right. But like, I think 16 was the first like, oh, there's now there's some real conflict mm -hmm. here. Um, yeah. Even that, though, was so slow. Like 16 shows up and then doesn't show up for a long time. And then like finally a note shows up and then nothing happens. The note gets erased and you're like, ugh. Love yeah, but this, this is how you can keep it 245 pages by having only three characters. In a book. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know? True. Well, there were four. The Ritter. Oh, yeah. But he didn't have a well, lot. Oh, and yeah, the other guy. Show. The 13 people. Yeah. Well, and, no, the yeah. other guy, the old guy. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, the old guy that created the whole Yeah, the no, whole I guess, universe. okay, there are a few Aries. other characters. Yeah. but Basically, it's three characters. Yeah. They're ancillary <laughs> characters. Yeah. Yes. I don't know. I, um... I, yeah, I, I, once, once 16 showed up, I was like, okay, now I got to figure out, and now I want to see what happens. Mm -hmm. But uh, it was interesting that, again, to keep yourself in a mental illness that you believe is keeping you safe, mm -hmm. right? Other says, the other says, 16 is going to try to communicate with you and you cannot listen to anything she says because she is out to get you. And I would imagine that's what an alcoholic feels like. That's what someone who's bipolar feels like. You know, no, 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 no. That's really dangerous to what's keeping me safe. Because mm -hmm. a lot of mental illness is not a lot of it. I shouldn't say that. I'm not an expert. But my experience with my mom of any kind of mental issues was about her protecting herself. It yeah, was coping, people developing coping mechanisms. That Same are with trauma. trauma. They're yeah. maladaptive, right? Mm -hmm. It's really not doesn't really get them what they want in the end, which is balance or health or happiness or whatever. But it's too scary. What you don't understand is too scary. So they stay in that unhealthy because it's the, you know, the devil, you know. Yeah. That, that was the interesting part when 16 left him a message mm -hmm. and he had this voice of the other saying, she's out to kill you. She's, she wants to kill you. She wants to kill me. She's, mm -hmm. you know, she's bad. She's bad. She's evil. All of this stuff. And didn't he say, if you read it, you'll go mad. If you read mm -hmm. it, you'll go mad. And so he erases like a bunch of it, but he doesn't erase the whole the thing. Whole thing. Yeah. yeah. Because Maybe. he still has that part of his brain uh -huh. that's like, yeah, that was really interesting to uh -huh. me because that showed so like too. the coexistence of the two different. That Matthew Rose. Yeah. See, I think totally his gone. decision not to leave initially was that exactly. Like he knew he needed to stay safe for a little bit longer. He wasn't ready to experience yeah. this alternate or reality, yeah. you know, like that's the only way he could prevent his mind from breaking. Yeah. I, even thought, though it was already broken, I thought that was right? really powerful when yeah. 16 is like, do you want to go out there? And when at first he's saying no, you're like, oh, like, yeah. uh, I get it. Yeah. But oh, please, like, yeah, go. You need yeah, to yeah. get better. And um, yeah, I was just I was terrified that the book was going to end with him not leaving because what the, the the point in the book when he makes that decision, it's very, very late in the game. Like, it's yeah, it, it's like, like four pages. Yeah. No, the exact, book ends. Yes, yes. <laughs> exactly. And I was like, oh, my God, he's going to yeah. stay in the he's going to stay in the house. Oh, my God. Yeah. And his poor family and all these people who are just wondering what happened to him. He just it's terrible when somebody goes missing. It's just, you know, the family has no closure. And yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I thought when he decided to leave, originally I thought that's when the book should end. I don't want to know what happens after. I want it to be left uh -huh. to my imagination. I want to fantasize that there were parties and he was having a great time. It was all lovely <laughs> and he was right back to normal. She didn't do that. I think on obviously on purpose, yeah. but because it wasn't that. It was kind of um, discombobulated. It was kind of neither here nor there. He was not Piranesi, but he was not yeah. Matthew Rose Sorensen. It was kind of sad yeah. and empty. And I wonder if that's someone who has a big leap forward in their mental health feels like, well, this is not that great either, but it's, it's healthier. I don't yeah, know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I was, I was like, the book is, 
It's not a bummer, but it ain't a feel good book. <laughs> I didn't it's go, not. woo, summer read. No, it wasn't like that. No, no. but it wasn't like a. Oh my God, this is so. No, it was like the house was interesting. You know, yeah. it, it did, you know, it dragged, but like it, it was inter- It was an interesting place to be. It was an interesting theory. It was interesting to read about these people who, you know, it was es- essentially like conspiracy theorists. Yeah. You mm-hmm. know, and the, yeah, you're right. It wasn't like, it wasn't like a downer to read, but no. in the end, it's definitely, it's a thinky book. <laughs> Yeah, I guess you're you're right. It's a thinky book. It's a it's a thinky book and it's you have to be patient in the beginning. <laughs> yeah. You have to yeah. really give it a minute. Yeah. Ruminate. Um it probably would have been better reading it as opposed to listening to it. Although the 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 person who narrated the book did a wonderful job. He was a really excellent reader, he's British and um I enjoyed listening to him read the book. I just got tired of hearing, you know, because he has to read every word. Right. When you read it, you can skip over. It's the eighth yeah, day. Yeah, I did the, the same thing. I skipped the, over it. I was like, I don't. Yeah. And it was it's much more day. pleasant. Yeah. It's, it's the next day. day. Exactly. <laughs> but I had a hard time yeah. tracking. Is it the next day? Because the description of the day was so damn long. Yeah. Yeah. You and know? I actually, I mean, I skipped over. So I didn't even care what day it was. Like, is this a week later? It didn't matter. Correct. Later? It didn't it same. Was, yeah. It was irrelevant. Actually. Yeah. Because what is time in an alternate reality? You know? Yeah. <laughs> it just made it feel like everything was just dragging yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. and dragging. So interesting. We always come up with different pros and cons of listening to mm-hmm. it versus reading. reading. Um, yeah. Well, I'm glad I, I'm glad I listened. I really wanted to read it. And there were several times where I went, dang it, I wish I'd bought myself the book. Um, but I didn't really have time to, to read it. I, I need to get better at switching between the two modalities. It was my, Kathy Reisinger, who's been a guest here before, does that all the time. She will read the physical book and she always buys the audio book too. And so she, when she's driving, she can pick up where she left off while mm. reading the book. Uh, especially, I don't know if she reads a hard copy book. I think she reads on the Kindle and mm-hmm. because the Kindle communicates with Audible, oh, yeah. she can just pick up where she left off. I was going to say, totally. I would think that'd be really hard, but that makes sense. No, actually. I think yeah. it's a pretty... Seamless. seamless transition so that you can mm-hmm. read and then you go audible will say would you like to go to the last page you were reading yes and then it will read it to you oh. so you can kind of get a sense of both but i prefer a book yeah book. Me too. that's what i like i like to sit with a book i'm reading where the crawdads sing right now because oh that's a good book um it is good i was like i need to read something just to read it mm-hmm. And not for this purpose, just to enjoy it. (laughs) Not for uh, work. (laughs) Kylie gave me that book for Christmas and she keeps asking me, have you read it yet? And I'm like, I don't have time. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to make time and just read it. And I'm I'm like probably three quarters of the way finished and now I can't find it. I have no idea where it is in my house. And I'm frustrated because yesterday I was like, I have 10 minutes. I sit down and read for 10. I spent the whole 10 minutes looking for the damn book. I never (laughs) found it. So I don't know what happened to it, but... Oh, and I listened to an audiobook. It was good as an audiobook. Oh, was it? I mm-hmm. bet. They're making it into a movie now. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. Yeah. It's coming out as a movie. We went to see um, Downton Abbey <laughs> movie the other day. Um, it was really good. <laughs> I don't know. Did either of you guys watch Downton oh, Abbey? Yeah. yeah. I didn't. I know oh. I would love it. You, you would, would love, love it. it. Yeah. You should start you at should. the beginning. Yes. With your girls. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. one that Camille would love. She's totally into that. <laughs> yes. Uh-huh. Yeah. George and I it's watched so the well whole done. thing. Yeah. It's so well done. Yeah. So well acted and well written and mm-hmm. the costumes and uh, everything. It's witty. It's great. Yeah. It's fun. <laughs> it's it's good. It, I really enjoyed it. So we went to see the movies and I saw Brother Crawdad sing on a poster at the movie oh, yeah. theater. Yep. Movies are back, I hear. I heard on the radio this morning, <laughs> Top Gun has determined, or Maverick has determined that the movies are back because of how oh, yeah. much that's earned at the box office yeah. and they're waiting. Jurassic world comes out next week. And I guess that's going to be big too. Anyway. I'm interested in either of those movies. I actually want to go see Maverick because I loved Top Gun. I loved that movie when it came out. I thought it was so great. And I've heard so many people say Maverick is really great. I've heard that too, so, actually, but I'm not, I, I could care less about Top Gun. You could. Oh, yeah. I loved it. Yeah. I thought it was awesome. I did not. Mm. But man, I loved Val Kilmer. <laughs> hey, bring it, buddy. Iceman. <laughs> that guy was foxy. Mm. 
Have you seen his documentary he made? No. He, it's very hard to watch. Yeah, is it? It breaks my heart. Yeah. It really does break my heart. He can't narrate it. I think his son narrated it mm-hmm. <clears throat> because his voice is so damaged from, from cancer. But yeah. it was really heartbreaking. It was really hard to watch. But I wanted to rent it to give him the money. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? So he could make a little money. I don't know if that's how it works. Maybe he doesn't make any money. But that was my theory. Because mm-hmm. I was like, well, if I rent it, he'll get like 50 cents. <laughs> <laughs> It's something at the end of the day after you pay taxes on it maybe it's 10 but whatever <laughs> Good try. so would you recommend this book yeah i would i'd recommend it um yeah i'd recommend it with an asterisk not a summer read yeah something that's interesting but you gotta wait it's a slow burn in the beginning yeah. but then it gets kind of interesting yeah, but it's a slow burn, but it's also a short book. So it's a short it's, book, yeah. 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 And Kathy's well, like, meh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, like I said, I was curious when I was reading it, but I have no great connection to this book whatsoever. Like, yeah. it's fine. <laughs> you know, it would probably resonate with someone who's either been through mental illness or has someone in their family with mental illness if they looked at it from that perspective. If you read this book with the perspective of I have someone who is in an altered reality, mm-hmm. it might might be too hard. But for some people, it might give them some kind of understanding because I think you're right. I think Maybe. those parallels are pretty, pretty interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know. Maybe. Next club, book club book. Do you know what it is? I do not. Do Did we decide one? Because oh, I did. You did? Oh, oh great. <laughs> Excellent. Because I came up with a lot now? of different Wait, ideas. What just happened? I came up no. with tons of ideas. But you I, did? Well, what yeah. are they? Yeah, yours well, may no, be better I than hear, mine. No, I tell me what yours. your ideas are because well, mine's already so- decided. Okay. I said, we sound like a bunch of chickens. <laughs> I feel like I'm in an alternative reality here. Like you came up um, with a book and we're supposed to know it already. What? You already know about the book. What are you talking about? I do? Yes. Oh, my God. You, I don't where have you been? Um, I don't okay. Know, I don't remember. All right. <laughs> Shit, sorry. Hear me out here. Okay. So. Because we are going to Alabama yeah. together soon and we may have some time to read. Yes. Lane, et yes. yes. By the lake. I was thinking um Southern Wait. for the genre. Uh-huh. Um Okay. I was thinking Southern for the genre. And so eh, like then I was thinking you talked about classics. So it was like, oh, you know, Eudora Welty, Flannery o- O'Connor, we could do short stories. But then I thought about what you said about I can't remember which book we read, but there was some allusion to the Atlanta child murders. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So Tayari Jones wrote Leaving Atlanta mm-hmm. about like it's set in like 1979 at the time of the child murders. It gets 4.5 stars on Goodreads, which is exceptional like nobody gets four stars it has to be like really good and I have read one other book by Tyree Jones in American Marriage which I gave five stars to I just freaking loved it so anyway that was my idea or you know something other is that a heavy book because it's around the child Atlanta child murders well I mean, listen, it's probably not going to be a beach read. <laughs> well, I have uh, my one of my one objection is I like what I like your thinking. I like <laughs> thinking of Southern something Southern. Yeah. I think I'd rather it be a little lighter because yeah, yeah. we read the book about the boys home. Mm-hmm. Oh, just and then time. we just read this Piranesi, which was kind of We're going heavy. dark. <laughs> we're really so dark I feel here. like and we yeah, read yeah. Carrie. Yeah, you know, we're just like, uh, <laughs> yeah, but I like what you're saying. So my book club book we could do later, because what I was going to do is read the book you were reading about college. Oh, yeah. It's called what? Who who you are? Where you go is not who you are. Where you go is not who you'll be. Where you go is not. who. Oh, you'll I think be. I have that, but haven't read it. Well, we can also read that. In you know, August. So because we're gearing uh-huh. up, you're going to be getting ready to do all that stuff. And yes. Isla's already signed up with her college counselor. So we can mm-hmm. do that later. But I like that book. I might read it another time. Yeah. Uh, the I like Child the idea Urban. of Southern, though. But like Southern, something. I mean, there's so many Southern books. Yeah. Like so many. Fanny Flagg is a great Southern author. Yes. I've never read any of her books. I've only seen her movies. She if, wrote Fried Green Tomatoes. Yeah. And mm-hmm. if we're thinking like Beach Read-ish, Jocelyn Jackson is a Southern writer i think maybe she's out of georgia mm-hmm. um but her they're sort of like i don't know 
there's drama and romance and like, but it's humor. I think humor is at the base of them. I like humor. But, I think um, I could use a little humor. <laughs> <laughs> I could use a little, I mean, even where the crawdad's saying, I'm like, it's pretty hard. <laughs> some of this, I'm like, Jesus the easiest book. No, there's it's some heavy, heavy stuff in yeah, there. Yeah, it's heavy yeah. and murder and a ch- abandonment and domestic abuse and, and yes. And the list goes on. Yeah. So, yes. I mean, she's just going to trial now. I just got where she's oh, going yeah. to trial. That's where I am. So have you read it? I'm assuming. I have not. Okay. Um, well, I don't know. I don't know about this. Angela, what was her name? No, Josh. Uh, Jocelyn ja- Jackson. Same, same. I Angela, can't, same. I can't vouch for her. <laughs> I, I cannot vouch for her. Um, but just... yeah. So we're looking for like. Well, we have to decide now. Humor and. Oh my God. It's so much pressure. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I brought stuff to the table. Uh, you right. did. Um, well, I did too, but you totally thwarted me with uh, my Southern oh, I book did not idea. Mean to thwart you. Southern authors. Here, I'm not going to. Mark yeah. Twain? Wait, just kidding. No. So. Keep going back to Fanny Flagg because she's Southern, but she'd be such an easy, fast read. Um, 240 pages. Do Fanny Flagg. Three, I mean, have you ever read Fanny Flagg? I, I read, it, did she do Fried Green Tomatoes? Mm-hmm. I, I read that like. 100 years ago. Yeah, 110 years ago. Um, I never even read that book. I never read it either. Oh, Halsey just sent me The Best Southern Novels of All Time by Oxford American. Let's see what it says. Thank you, Halsey. I am not reading William Faulkner. I am not. No, that's the first one. Number one is Absalom, Absalom by William Faulkner. Pass. No. (laughs) All the King's Men by Robert Penn. Uh, Portrays a dramatic political ascent. Pass. And, okay. The <laughs> Sound and the Fury, William Faulkner. Sense. No. Ventures of Huck Flint, Huck, Huckleberry Finn. No. No. Kill a Mockingbird. I've already read it. The Movie Goer by Walker Percy. The Movie Goer tells the story of Binks Bo- Bowling, a young stockbroker in post war New Orleans, the decline of Southern traditions and the problems of his family, and his traumatic experience in the Korean War. As I Lay Dying, mm. William Faulkner. Why does everyone like oh, William Faulkner? F's sake. Yeah. <laughs> He's so dark. Yeah, we're not looking for Faulkner right now. Invisible Man by Ralph Ellison. The novel addresses many of the social intellectual issues facing African Americans in the early 20th century, including black nationalism, the relationship between black identity and Marxism. Wise Blood by Flannery O'Connor. Haunting first novels, classic 20th century literature is the story of Hazel Motes, a 22-year-old caught in an unending struggle. All these are so dark. They all sound dark. Their eyes were watching God. Yeah, we need like a... That's dark. It just happens to yes. be like a beach read set in the South. It's kind of what we want. Yeah. The heart is a lonely hunter. It's a lake read. Like, yeah. where, are the, where are our lake reads? <laughs> oh, like, Confederacy of Dunces. Did you ever read that? I did. No. I loved it. I hate it. I loved it. it. Oh, I loved it. I loved it. I thought it was the most <laughs> self-indulgent book that had ever been written. <laughs> ever. Bert loved it. And I was like, no, nah, no. Nah. Oh, a I Death in that. the Family is an autobiographical novel by author set in Knoxville, Tennessee. Um, Look Homeward Angel. All these are so heavy. Beloved by Toni Morrison, The Awakening, The Color Purple. I mean, they're all just like <laughs> heavy. I love this list. Thank you. Very Gone with the Wind, which is only, I don't know, a thousand pages. Pages. Yeah, all these are super heavy. It sounds like we're going for Fanny Flag or Jocelyn Jackson or Top Ten Best Fanny Flag Books. Yeah. Number one, The Wonder Boy of Whistle Stop. 9.9. Number two, a Red Bird Christmas, 9.8. The All Girl Filling Station's Last Reunion. Yeah. Welcome to the World, Baby Girl. Standing in the Rainbow. Fried Green Tomatoes is number six. Hmm. The whole town's talking. I still dream about you. Can't wait to go to heaven. Daisy Faye and the Miracle Man. Let's do, just pick one. Let's do number one. Uh, the Wonder Boy of Whistle Stop. Interesting titles. Well, the Wonder Boy of Whistle Stop makes me think because Whistle Stop is where Fried, Fried Green Tomatoes, tomatoes took place. Yeah. I wonder. Um, I know. Is is it um, just in that? It's in that world. Yeah, it does. Oh, you know what? Whistle Stop number two. So this is the second. It's probably a sequel, um, a sequel I don't to Friday. Yeah, let's yeah do we that. don't let's need do that. that. Let's, so, what about the last all-girl filling station reunion? Okay. Now that okay. is like close to 400 pages. However. Never mind. However. Never mind. Listen, if it's we're going to be on airplanes. That's true. And we're going to be at the lake. So yeah. we do have two five-hour flights. Yes. So. I'm not objecting to that. 
I just want to go on record. <laughs> and I am this not- is your one chance to get over a 300 page book. So uh, 369 pages. The all girl oh, filling stations. It's, it's not even 400. It's, it's doable. What about welcome to the world, baby girl? I like the title. I do too. But uh, I'm with, okay. So it's the first in a series, but that's fine. What is the first Which one? Welcome to the world. Welcome baby to girl? the world. But that's fine. If, as long as it's the first. As long as it's the first. It, it gets fewer stars than the other one. It, oh God, you're killing me. No, let's do the other one. Okay. What's it called? The All Girl oh, Filling Stations Last Reunion, Reunion by Fanny Flagg. Okay. Dear Lord, what a title. The oh, All that. Girls Filling Stations Last, Last Reunion. Reunion. A novel. <laughs> by Fanny Flagg, which we are hoping to it's be good. a lake read. A lake a read. A southern we lake read. Yes. I like your southern lake read thing. That was very good. <laughs> It just took us a well, while to get there. Yeah, I know, right? Um, yeah. It took us a five-hour plane okay. ride to get there. Right. So, so who has fine. the hot goss? Like, <laughs> who, so I was going to say, should we plan our July book club book and make this the most riveting podcast ever? <laughs> <laughs> right? You're going to have so many comments from people in the South saying, Leanne, I have emailed you Southern novels no, for the last- No, not really, no. No, I haven't gotten really any Southern novel recommendations, but- you will after today. I will after today. That'd be great. I would love to hear about that. But this is good. This is a continuation of your theme of genres. Yeah. We have been really hitting yeah. a lot of genres. And we have. Kudos. Like, and then the the college one will be about, I don't know, college. Yeah. <laughs> Just as a genre. No, nonfiction. Like. Yeah. Educational. Yeah. Or something. Edu- yeah. Research. I don't know. Research. Uh, I'm looking forward it's to reading. Parenting. That It's about parenting. Sure. That book. Kind of. It's, it's, yeah, it's helpful for parents. That's good. That's good. I think that will be helpful. I I wish I would have read it a lot sooner. Yeah. I got a lot of comments on my podcast with Susie, Mm -hmm. the counselor, a lot of people saying, thank you so much for this information. I mean, there is a lot of free resources on their website. Mm -hmm. Um, so you don't have to spend any money Mm -hmm. to educate yourself, but, um, I'm glad it was helpful because, you know, sometimes you just don't know what you don't know. Yeah. You know, you don't know what you don't know. How are you supposed to know that? And then when you start talking about it with someone who knows everything, it's helpful just to hear even just the categories of what you should be thinking about. Yeah. Are you guys excited for We Dowie? Uh, I haven't really started thinking about it yet, but I'm starting to get excited. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I've yeah. been packing. This Have week. you? Yeah. Oh, really? What a luxury. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> it's face. I forgot that it was June. <laughs> Mm. Well, yeah, it's because I'm in packing mode. We have so many different yeah. trips between like Richard was packing for his trip. Um, Camille's packing for her big trip. And so we just, I was like, you know what? Everybody's packing today. Like right yeah. before he left. Um, just, and I was like, look, obviously I'm not going to be living out of this suitcase for the next <laughs> couple of weeks before right. we go. But it was just more a matter of, we all took our checklists and we're like highlighted the things that, oh, we need to buy this or we yeah. need to whatever. Deal so with that. Yeah. yeah. I'm well, like, I'm ready now. You know, we had house guests. We had like, with all of that, now that graduation and everything is over and I'm like, Lily's done with her last final today. And I'm like, okay, now we can do summer. Now you can start prepping. Yeah. I do so. not feel that way because I have, um, you know, a hard full court press until yeah, really <laughs> until I leave for like Catalina. July, yeah. Like I'm yeah. starting to think, when am I actually going to pack? I mean, the good thing is I'm a pretty fast packer. And I don't have, it's not complicated. This is an easy know? packing. Like it's, this yeah, trip yeah. is probably the easiest. Yeah, yeah totally. To T-shirt, yeah. shorts, bathing suit, mm-hmm. right. flip-flops, pajamas, underwear. I mean, fanny flag like, book. Um. Fanny flag book. <laughs> fanny flag book. Um, but um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it too. I got to sit down at some point, maybe on my flight to Alabama. I, I know I said I was going to send you a, a grocery list ahead of time. I really don't know when I'll have time to do that. And Catalina. I'll do oh, it yeah. There you go. So I was in therapy today going, I just, I just can't wait for Catalina because I think the girls are so independent. I'm not going to see them. Um, they have two excursions planned and one on each day. And I mean, I'm not going with them. They don't need me. They're 18. Mm-hmm. So, um, so I'm just going to kind of hang out and that's when I'll do my grocery list. That's when I'll get start getting my ducks in a row. I feel yeah. very out of, out of, like I've got all my paperwork. That's why I wanted my paperwork mm-hmm. so early. It's all done. 
All I have to do is put that notebook in my bag Great. and I'm done. So that's good. And any of you who lead a Girl Scout troop know that that there is a, a lot of paperwork. So <laughs> all that's done. Um, but yeah, anyway, I'm ready. I think it's going to be really fun. You know yeah. that Isla started a text thread with the girls going on the trip. Yes. And she's like getting flooded with questions. What do we wear? What oh, do we really? bring? Oh, what okay. do we pack? And I was like, the packing list is up. They can just look at the packing list. She's like, I think it's not about that. I think they're just really excited. <laughs> yeah, they are excited. They are at our last excited. meeting when yeah. we discussed it, there was, yeah, the excitement was exploding. <laughs> it was explosive. It was crazy. It was really cute. Yeah. Thank you for being brave. And <laughs> yeah, because it is, you got to be kind of brave to, you know, pick this up and carry it across the country <laughs> and be willing to do what you need to do. So thank you for being brave because you, oh, I fine. know what we're walking into. You have no idea. Um, yeah, that's not the, yeah, I'm more worried about the travel. And I'm actually not really worried about it, but that's the part that I, I am a little trepidatious about. Oh, yeah? A little bit. Just getting everybody from A to B mm -hmm. and hurting cats? Hurting cats, it's not even that. Like, I just always worry at the airport, something, someone's going to miss something. There's going to be some question, like, mm -hmm. who are you in relation to this child? Are you allowed to take, like, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. that part is the part that's so unknown. Yeah. Going camping is fine. Yeah. What, like, we could show up and it could be tense and we'll be fine. Yeah. Obviously, that's not going to happen. You know what I mean? Yeah, but I'm do. the, I don't yeah. worry about that at all. We've had these girls long enough. It will be fine. Yeah. It'll be interesting on day four. Yeah. Because we've never taken them for this long. Yeah. So day four and five, when everybody starts, they're like, <laughs> okay. Descent. They're, yeah. Yes. They're meltdowns because they've been going like into the going, house. going, going, They're going. like, their descent yes. into the house. They're yeah. sleeping till one. <laughs> Can't get them up. They're, you know, or just they're, you know, they're not super good at self-care. They're no. super good at like, oh my God, party, party, party. Yes. And then crash. Yeah. And they're not good at taking care of themselves. And I'm not sure that the, all of them are good at understanding when somebody else crashes what they might need in that moment. Yes. True. When you point it out, they're super good about it, but they may not get it on their own. So that'll be interesting. But again, that happens every time we take them anywhere anyway. Yes. True. You know, it'll just be on a slightly larger yeah. scale, but that's fine. And it's a good group. I it mean, is. yeah, it's a good they're, group. They're good kids. They're, well, it'll Isla, be fine. Isla like, said, she would like to plan a field trip next year to a museum because that's what Charlotte says yeah. she, she would wants. rather do. She'd yeah. rather go to a museum. And oh. she said, well, I feel really bad that Charlotte mm -hmm. doesn't get to do what she wants to do. So can we just plan a field trip to go see a museum for a meeting? And I went, yeah, totally. That's mm -hmm. fine. So we'll have to put that on we our We love agenda. field trips. Yeah, totally. Yeah, girls love field trips. Yeah. Yeah. And we'll go to, maybe we'll try to find a museum maybe that's odd or off the beaten path. I'm sure Charlotte's been to LACMA and, you know, MOCA and mm -hmm. all those museums. So if well, we can find. Yeah, we'll have to talk to the her museum about. museum of what, ice cream. Yeah, what does she mean by <laughs> right. a museum? Like, mm -hmm. is she talking about, like, specifically an art museum or, like, there's like the bunny museum in Pasadena that there's no actual bunnies in it. <laughs> it's like, all, I haven't been there, but I've seen people. Um, pictures from it. It's, it's a very bizarre little house that literally everything is bunnies. It's just like all bunny paraphernalia. It's like just a weird thing to do. Right. So it's like, is she looking for a weird thing to do? Or is mm -hmm. she looking for like high art or, yeah. you know, what kind of experience or right. a selfie extravaganza <laughs> <laughs> at the bunny museum? Well, yeah, Isla was very concerned that she oh, was left. She was, uh, she was less concerned, I guess, about the girls who decided not to go because of the length of the trip or because of other various reasons, but more concerned that we had chosen something that this child mm -hmm. is like, I am absolutely not interested in that activity. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure she's concerned about the other girls too, but. but sure. Yeah, I get it. Well, let's plan a museum trip. We'll see what Charlotte wants to do. Yeah. yeah. Um. Anyway, well, thank you for coming to talk to me about the book club. We had a hard time getting together this time, didn't we? Yes. Yeah. This is a tough time of year for yeah. everyone. Yeah. It is. You know, even take out graduation. The end of the school year is just yeah, a freight train that has no breaks, I feel like. I agree. No, so. exactly. I don't even have a graduate and yeah. I'm like 
flying by the seat of my pants. So <laughs> it's I crazy. Only imagine. Yeah. And now this yeah. book, no illusions here. I think you'll be in Hawaii before I get back from when do you leave for Hawaii? The 26th. Oh, okay. So there's like one day in between. It's actually my birthday. I may not want to do a podcast then. So. Why? <laughs> Why? I'll give you a cake. Okay. I'll give you a cake. Perfect. We'll talk about um, our beach read. Wait, the 26th is a no. Monday? Uh, I don't know. No, I think it's a Sunday. Oh, then I won't even be back. Oh. So you're going to be... Oh, yeah, yeah, I get yeah. back the 27th. Oh, okay. So we're not going to book club until July when you're back from Hawaii. And when when are you traveling? Are you going anywhere this summer? Uh, Yeah, I'm, yeah. <laughs> you don't places. have to say where, but you are. Yeah, yeah. Um, Someplace in July for uh, less than a week. And um, at the end of July through August 10th, I'm going to Canada to see my family. Oh, nice. Ha- who I haven't seen. I haven't seen my sister and brother and their kids um, in three years. I haven't seen my parents in two and a half years. Wow. So, That's a long time. Nice. It's it a, a long, long time. time. Yeah. It's a really long time for the cousins because um, like my sister's, uh, my sister's four girls and her two youngest, we've always called them the littles. They were the littles because the last time we saw them, they were like five and a half oh. and, or they were and seven and now all of a sudden or six and, uh, and it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. The point is it was a long time ago. And so now all of a sudden they're the ages of the youngest, like, you know, of like Vivian, like, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah three years ago. So it's, it's just, yeah, it's a mind scramble. Um, it's going to be very different. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, it'll be fun. Yeah. No, it's going to be great. I, we can't wait, but, um, that's great. Yeah. It's I'm a glad you're getting to go. Yeah. We moved our trip. We were taking a big family trip in July and we moved it to August and I'm really glad, um, because I feel like I have all this cluster of travel mm-hmm. and then I'm home for like one minute and yeah. then big travel again. So I'm glad we spread it out. It took a lot of work to get everything reorganized. I don't think the people that live in our houses understand what it takes to just plan a simple trip. (laughs) You know, it's not that complicated, but there are so many moving parts that I really don't think anybody, at least in my house, Bert does. My two kids have no idea when, let's just move our trip to August. And you're like, oh my God. (laughs) Do you know how many flights, how many hotels, how many excursions we've booked that now have to reorganize? It took me hours to do it in the first place. Now it's going to take me hours to reorganize it and cost more money. Mm -hmm. It's really a pain. Well, and now that the kids are older, they have these, their own schedules. So it's not even like you're just organizing between your husband and yourself. Like Mm -hmm. now I've got four schedules. Mm -hmm. Like I've got kids going here and going there and working and doing this and whatever. And you're like, (laughs) Uh, yeah, (laughs) like it's just a lot more management, you know? It is. It is a lot more management. I was talking about this in therapy today. I was saying- I feel like I am always the asshole. In every scenario, I am the asshole. I have an example of this. Uh, I know we were wrapping up the podcast, but we'll, we'll give a little meat since we had a lot of dead air. <laughs> I uh, asked Isla, um, I said, how are you feeling about your, your chemistry final? Now, we know she's not doing well in chemistry. She's had a teacher that's been very hard for her to learn, learn from. She has learning distinctions anyway. But her teacher has an accent. She's Belgian, and she's having a really hard time understanding her. So she's had a tutor all through. We get got her tutor for chemistry, but she's she she might pass chemistry. We'll see. But I was like, you know, you get time and a half. You get to take the test um, in a separate room, and someone can read the questions to you. And she said, I really wish that she doesn't usually take the read the questions to you option. It makes her feel kind of like she's cheating. Mm-hmm. So she doesn't like that. So. But this time she said, you know, when my tutor reads the questions to me, I really get it. I really get it. And I can answer the question right away. So maybe for chemistry, because her grade is so low, maybe I'll do that. I said, do you want me to? I asked, do you want me to reach out to the assistant principal and see if that's okay? Because we're in a private school. The teacher doesn't have to allow it. Mm -hmm. But most of the time they do, except for this teacher. This teacher has been very obtuse with a lot of it. So she said, yes, I would love that. So I do. Assistant principal emails back and says, no problem. Have her show up at her counselor's office, Miss So-and-so's office, and Miss So-and-so will read this the, the test to her. 
what? That's not what I wanted. No, I wanted it. No, oh, just forget it. And I was like, hold on. I did everything you asked me to do. Why am I the asshole? Why are you actually like Every person in my house does that to me. That's just the most recent clear example. Happens when we order dinner. Hey, where do you want to eat dinner? I'd like ramen. What restaurant? This restaurant. I'd like black ramen. There's no black ramen in the menu. Well, then just forget it. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. You picked the fucking restaurant. I'll just eat by myself. What? Why am I the asshole again? I'm just telling you, there's no black ramen on the menu. I'm not gonna, I don't even know what black ramen is. This is happening so much lately that I start fit going, I think I'm going to move out. <laughs> like, I think I'm going to move into this house and live in the podcast studio and let them figure it out for themselves for five minutes because I guarantee you it would not happen. Another thing, we moved this trip so that my daughter's school orientation has to move. I can't move for orientation because yeah. mommies don't do that in college. Yeah. She has to move it. So I ask her, I need you to move it because then we have to move flights and hotel, which book up really fast. If it didn't matter for flights and hotel, I wouldn't really care. Can you please move it? Yeah, I'll do it. Have you moved it? Ah, oh, forgot. I'll do it today. Have you moved it? Mm, nah, I'll do it when I get home. Have you moved it? Ah, oh, I'll be right there. Can you move it for me? <laughs> can you move it? Can you? Okay, you can sleep over at your friend's house tonight, but you can't stay out all day tomorrow because I need you to move that appointment. Okay, I'll be home early, 4.30. Knowing yeah. I'm leaving at 6 o'clock. I'm texting her. When you coming home, I'm going to drop somebody off. I'll be home in an hour. Two hours. No, girl. How about now? Oh, totally forgot. I needed to stop at Target to get this thing for my class, for my project. Like stuff I can't get her in trouble for because it's for school, quote. <laughs> it's 4.30 rolls in. I was like, can you change it now? I've asked you like five times, like that thing you said, it's on my brain. Yeah. And it gets, gets heavy. Yeah. Help me. Help me. And then you're the asshole myself. for nagging. Yes. I'm like, the asshole yes. for exactly nagging. Exactly it. That's my at point. At a certain point, you're like, okay, I, you have to ask over and over. And you're like, well, if you just did it the first fucking time I asked, yeah. or the I fifth, even. Be like, if yes. you had done it the fifth time, it wouldn't have gotten, it wouldn't Correct. have escalated to I this. I wouldn't have. And guess what? This is not for me. Yeah. yeah. This is not, it was not for me to have your test read to you. It was not for me. I didn't even want ramen. I didn't even eat ramen from that restaurant. I'm trying to lose weight. Ramen's not the way. I, help me here. And I feel like everything I do, I'm the asshole lately. Why would you ask me so many times I'm doing it? <laughs> then fucking do it. Okay? Does this happen in your house? Oh, my God. All the time. Does yes. it? Does it? It doesn't Teenagers. happen in your house, does it? Uh, yeah, I mean, yes. To it a, doesn't. I uh, can tell by your reaction. It does not. <laughs> I have one that it does not happen with and one that it does is giving me a run for my money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, for the record, for anybody listening, it sucks. Yeah. I work my ass off organizing four people's schedules. I mean, the same thing happened with Bert. Bert has this dental problem. I have made him so many dentist appointments that he keeps canceling that I am losing my mind. So I've given it to his assistant, right? Assistant makes the appointment. Now it's going to the assistant. Still, he's scared of the dentist. I understand it in my brain. But at the same time, I go, this is like the sixth time you've done this. You've had a problem with your tooth since January. You are a grown-up. Go to the goddamn dentist. Come on. And then he goes to the dentist and... <laughs> They tell him what he doesn't want to hear. And then he tells me I called the wrong dentist. <laughs> Again, <sighs> I'm the asshole. Why didn't you just call this person? I go, hey, you know what? You don't have regular teeth. Why don't you call your childhood dentist who took care of your teeth your whole life? No, no, it's not going to work. No. Calls his mom. Mom says, why don't you call your childhood dentist? And he goes, yeah, maybe. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Why? Oh. I just said the same thing your mother said. But I'm, again, the asshole because I should have just done it myself. Really? Because I've been trying to get you to do it yourself since January. But when I do it and you're uncomfortable, I'm the asshole. This is happening everywhere. I had my whole therapy session was about this today. And she was like, well, they're not going to change until you change. And I'm like, how am I supposed to change? What should I do? Just go, I will not be doing that. I need help with uh, communicating with my teacher. I will not be doing that. 
I'd like ramen. Have fun ordering. You know, what am I supposed to do? Right. Yeah, that's tough. Right, because it is tough. Like, that is what you should do. But really, are you not going to be on Georgia to change the orientation? Because then what? She misses it? Yeah. Like, that's not a lesson that you can really let her learn the hard way, right? Like, well, she can change it. We just can't get there because we can't get a flight now. Uh, Well, we're driving for 10 hours. Do you know what I mean? Like, how do you, I, I don't know, that should be the lesson. But then the reality is... But what's at the base? really the lesson. And what, this was what we were talking about. The base of it is no one wants to take responsibility for Mm -hmm. what's going on. And everyone has the right, they feel, to be reactive where I'm concerned. Because I can handle it. So you can't be reactive to your chemistry teacher, uh, even though you'd like to be. You can't be reactive at the dentist when the dentist says, no, we're actually going to have to like rip all your teeth out. It's not what they said, but <laughs> can't be reactive at the dentist, but you can be reactive with me, you yeah, know? Yeah. Cause you you're can't, the safe space. Cause like, I'm the safe space. That's the tough thing about yeah. being a mom and a wife. We're the yeah. safe space. And well, know, I don't want to be that safe. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you need to start wearing like a barbed wire suit and you go, go ahead. Give me a hug. Yeah. We'll see how that works for you. Because I feel like at what point does anybody have any, reflection to go, that wasn't nice. So Isla actually came home the next day and did do that. Mm -hmm. She said, I'm sorry I reacted that way. I was really stressed and I'm really sorry. And I was like, I appreciate your apology. I'd like for it just not to happen. And she said, would you tell me how I should have reacted because I was stressed? I said, you could have said any number of things. You could have said, thank you so much for doing that. I'm not sure that's really what I wanted. Instead of what? (laughs) That's not what I wanted and storming off. You're telling me the same thing, but respectfully. You know, thank you very much for doing that for me. I'm not sure that's really what I need. I would have said, okay, you know. My mom was a social worker and she used to say that the kids who um, act out at school, the kids who are um, well-behaved at school act out at home Mm -hmm. and the kids who act out at school, it's because that is their safe space. Mm. So um, it means that home is chaotic and unnurturing and, you know, all of the bad things. And so that's, it's a red flag, not because the kid is bad, but because it makes you wonder what's going on. So, you know, the fact that it shows what a safe space you are for your kids, that they can act out to you because <laughs> so kids awesome. who are being abused are not, they're not in a safe space to act out and react to their parents like that. And so it is developmentally appropriate that teenagers are assholes. <laughs> yes. You know, they can be real assholes and yes. that's mm-hmm. developmentally appropriate, but it doesn't make it easier as a parent to live with. Richard's always telling me like, well, you know, when one of our kids is <laughs> behaving in a certain way or both of them, um, and I'm losing my mind, he's always like, yeah, but they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. And I'm like, I know, but I'm still a human being. Yeah. Still and I still you. have feelings mm-hmm. like, I get that I'm supposed to be a mom and I'm supposed to be like beyond certain things, but like, ultimately I'm just a person who also can be having a rough day and also Mm -hmm. can be having like my own challenges. And so, you know, being screamed at is not, is not helpful to me. Yeah. I think what you're saying is my husband never developed out of being a teenager. That's what you're telling me (laughs) because I'm not sure. Yeah, there's, I get a lot of that from him also, which means they're learning it from him. And on some level it works. You get the upper hand by being reactive Um, in some scenarios, maybe not in all. Isla's, I think, was genuinely about stress. She was really stressed and she just was like that, for whatever reason, created more stress. Now, at the end of the day, that teacher did read to her and she said it was really helpful. And so she, she went through with it. It just wasn't what she had planned Mm -hmm. you know she was thinking the other the assistant principal would be reading to her which she really likes and this other teacher had never read to her before so it was the unknown of like that's not going to work that's not what I had in mind and she did apologize so on her own she reflected and came back and went that was pretty shitty so I appreciate that to me that's a teenager not being able to regulate and then realizing Mm -hmm. and then coming back and saying okay that to me is really healthy you know, the other two people have <laughs> no recognition that mom needs any apologizing to 
or responsibility for themselves made. And I really don't know how to change that. I don't know what to change in myself because you're right. We should be the safe place. We should be the mm-hmm. place where they can come undone. But we are human. And it does stink when in the course of a few days back to back, you're hit from every person in your house with the same exact issue where you go, this is a dynamic I've had a part in creating. Yeah. This is not only them. This is me too. And the only person I can really control is me. But how do you how do you do it differently? Sounds like another podcast (laughs) discussion. I really would like to know the answer to that. I mean, Mm -hmm. I think I've been a pretty good parent. I think I'm good at setting boundaries, but I definitely am in a moment in parenting where I'm the doormat and I don't want to be the doormat. And I don't want to teach my kids that they should be a doormat, you know? Right. This sounds like a podcast. Or they can use someone else as a doormat. It sounds like a podcast for Kristen. Yeah. She's just going to tell me to set boundaries. (laughs) <laughs> she's gonna say you're just gonna have to set boundaries um no it is probably a podcast for Kristen. i should ask yeah her. but it's mm-hmm. like yeah boundaries but also okay so what are those boundaries what should like granular oh. what what should i have done in this situation what should i have done mm-hmm. in this situation because sometimes it's like yeah boundaries okay yeah we're all working on boundaries yeah but like well, i also think sometimes it helps to point it out like i know sometimes you know you can actually say I get that you're stressed, but that does not mean you should take it out on me. We mm-hmm. have a different solution, right? Like I know sometimes that helps when I point that out shortly after the moment happens. Mm-hmm. Like hopefully it sinks in. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. To be determined. But yeah. um, I I know that that is heard in my household uh-huh. when I point it out like that. Right. Um, in a space where I'm like, listen, this is still a safe space, but you can't treat me like that. That's not okay. Like I don't deserve yeah. that. Yeah. Um, I, I get, definitely have those heard, conversations. You know, where I've had I'm them like, too. Um, I, reminder: I yeah. am a person. I have feelings. Right. Mm-hmm. I have a lot going on in my life too. Like you are part of my life. You're a big part of my life, but you are not the only part of my life. Mm-hmm. I have stresses. I have feelings. You need to remember that. Yeah. I have those moments too. And then sometimes I have those moments where I'm reacting to their yeah. reactiveness to of me. Course. Yeah. Does that happen with the ramen? <laughs> so I was like, well, then you figure it out. I'm telling you what's on the menu. Fine. I'll just go get my reading glasses. That's what Bert said. I went, okay, <laughs> fine. I'll just bring you the menu. Fine. There was a lot of that going on because I get tired of being the grown up. I get tired of being the one that goes, you know, I'm a person too, and you should be nice to me. As I go, how many times I say that? Can you not figure that out? Yeah. Shouldn't you already know that? Don't I do enough? <laughs> yeah. Come on. Yeah. Yep. Um. Anyway. Well, I'm not glad, but I am glad to know you guys deal with that too. So. Solidarity. Solidarity, <laughs> baby. Well, thank you for reading this book. Mm-hmm. Thank you in advance for reading Fanny Flag and whatever the name of that book is. Like, I've already what, forgotten. What are we reading again? Something about gas station people. <laughs> it has a very reunion. long title. Yeah. The All Girls Gas Station's Last Reunion. I don't close. think it's the he gas said station. I'm close. It's like the filler station. The gas filling station's <laughs> last reunion of girls. <laughs> There's no gas. No? <laughs> colder. He said I'm colder. <laughs> about... Girls that pump gas in their last reunion. <laughs> Listen, Leanne's going to post it on her Instagram. You're going to know what the book club pick is. It's a fanny flag book. Wait for it on Leanne's Instagram. We'll come back. All like, three of us will have read a different book. <laughs> I know, right? Wait, I thought you said it was a filling station. Not a, what? I don't know. What? Yes, something like that. Um, well, I'll look forward to this trip with you guys. It's going to be will really be interesting. Fun. It's yeah. going to be fun. It is yeah. going to be fun. Yes. Yeah. Thank you for doing it with me. And thank you for doing mm-hmm. this podcast every month. I know it's hard. Sometimes I feel so bad when we have scheduling issues like we did this time. I feel terrible. It makes me feel yeah. so like I'm taking massively important amounts of time from your life because it's so we're so busy. So know that I think about it and that it, it I, I it's not it doesn't. I don't hold it lightly that you give me your time. It's it's a big deal, and I appreciate it uh, because I just, when we start getting complicated, I start going, oh, I'm such a jerk. Why do I ask them to do this every month? It's such an inconvenience for them. I feel so bad. So I don't feel that way. Good. No, we just Like, I mean, I enjoy it. book club. I enjoy reading. Yeah, me like, too. Like, it, it gets complicated sometimes. Like, yeah. I don't, I mean. 
it is what it is. Yeah. And it's kind of like the book club format is great because you're not always reading. It's like picking your own books can become an echo chamber of like, oh, I'm interested in this. So I'm only going to read about what I'm interested in. So reading, you know, doing the genres and the different things, it's like, "Eh, did I want to read Stephen King right when I was having a heart attack? (laughs) (laughs) Not, like but it's like you know like it it's it's good to like go outside of our zones and like yeah. to read fantasy when fantasy is 100 percent not my genre any and, of our genres um, yeah so yeah but, but to talk that. about it with someone else like how many books do you read that like you never discuss with anyone yeah, like absolutely. do you just go through your list and that's it oh i love book club do you know what i mean yeah me too that's what i'm saying I like i like the fact that we get to read different stuff and we talk about it and and so i read it with fun. a different perspective Mm Because if I read a book just to read it, I just enjoy it. If I read Uh a book to talk to you about it, I really start analyzing and thinking about the book and really kind of picking it apart and putting it back together in a a deeper way. It's a deeper, I really enjoy it, but I just worry sometimes that I am the asshole. (laughs) (laughs) I actually am the asshole. My take family that tells off your me plate. I am. You can take that worry <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. Well, you know, if one person tells you you're an asshole, <laughs> they're probably lying. If two people tell you. <laughs> yeah, but if those two people are in your family, it doesn't count. It doesn't they're count. definitely doesn't lying. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. And if they're teenagers, that 100% doesn't count. Like, <laughs> so then all three of them don't count. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. We've yes. determined Bert has not progressed out of teenager. <laughs> Maybe nine. He may still be nine. <laughs> Mostly. All right. Well, thank you for doing this every month. I appreciate it. And, uh, until Fanny Flag. That's right. <laughs>